Good morning, my name is Dan Sampson. I'm a biologist here at, at Odin State Fish Hatchery. Uh, this is one of six hatcheries that the um, state DNR, which is now DNRE, um, operates um, and operates to be able to produce fish for, um, for citizens to catch. Um, that's really the main purpose. Um, the fish that, uh, that are produced um, at, at, the, at the hatcheries end up going into public waters. They're there for the public to catch. Um, the typically the fish are put into spots that are either uh, that have a lot of fit, too much fishing pressure, um, maybe don't have enough um, early rearing um, environments. We produce all of the brown trout eggs and all the rainbow trout eggs for uh, for the entire state. Uh, we're the sole source for um, for uh, three different stocks of uh, brown trout that we have here, uh, and one stock of the uh, domestic domestic um, eagle egg rainbows. Um, the process for that um, starts, of course, with the adult. Um, it takes us about uh, three to four years for um, for the adult to grow to maturity. From there, we will separate them from male and female, and we'll spawn them in a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning we'll use one female and one male only, and they'll go into a separate bucket. Um, we mix the, the the eggs. We take the eggs first, and we uh, put the milk on top of milk from the male that has a sperm in it and we put a little bit of a saline solution into the, um, into the bucket which breaks apart the milk and makes the uh, sperm cells um, swim very rapidly uh, and really helps in fertilization. Um, they'll go through a, a rinse, they go through a erythromycin bath, um, they also get uh, a external disinfection. And those take, take care of diseases so that we don't, if there's any diseases they don't have, that we don't bring those diseases into the hatchery. Uh, from there, they go into an inc the eggs will go into an incubator. Um, we use heat stack incubators. Um, it takes about uh, the, fir the first four weeks that they that um, after they've been fertilized, uh, they're very very tender. If we meaning that if we move them or jostle them or bump them, we can easily kill thousands and thousands of them um, without meaning to. So they're pretty they're hands off at that point. We we leave them in the incubation and we don't we don't touch them. We well, we can't. These are Gilcrest brown trout eggs. You can see they're a lot lighter colored. Um, they, they don't tend to be as, as red as rainbow eggs. Uh, they grow pretty much a little, a little bit slower than the rainbow eggs do. Um, they need typically about an extra 12 days in, in incubation. So they'll be in here for about four weeks until they eye up. And then once that happens, we'll take them out and we'll shock them. We'll dump them from uh, one container into another, basically, or shake the, the whole um, incubation tray and that'll cause any of the dead eggs to turn white and then we can use the machine to be able to, to can, uh, tell the difference between a, a dead egg, a good egg and a dead egg and uh, it'll pick out all the dead eggs for us and once we have those separated then, then we'll, we'll come up with a population estimate for what we have alive and then either um, we'll, we'll either reseed them in the incubations here or we'll ship them off to some uh, other hatcheries at that point, once they're eyed, they can be out of the water for out for quite a few hours. As long as they just got moist, um, they're moist and cool. They'll they'll survive just fine. Uh, they can be out for uh, for a day or two. We can ship them through um, through FedEx if we want them to, or or even the postal service could, could, could deliver them in a box for us without a problem. Um, and then after that, that that eyed stage takes about two it's about two weeks uh, until they hatch. Uh, once they hatch, then it's a, a little bit of a different ball game again because we can't move them. We can't. Um, they're more of a little bag filled with jelly than anything. Um, so at that point, we have to leave them alone for about another four weeks until they're ready to swim up. Uh, until they throw their yolk sac and they're ready to swim up. And at that point, then they're ready to start eating. These are eyed Gilcrest eggs, Gilcrest brown trout eggs. You can see there's the dark spots or the eyes. You can see them pretty clearly through the cell wall. And they're, these are about three days away from being um, sturdy, uh, tough enough that we can we can pick them. Um, these are, the, all of these eggs are going to be picked on uh, actually it's going to be on um, Thursday, which is in two days, and then they're going to be shipped to um, Thompson Hatchery, State Fish Hatchery, up in the UP. So we put about um, it's about a liter and a half of eggs in, in each tray, and that depends. Uh, the the population um, 
can vary greatly. Typically, we have about anywhere between 14,000 eggs per liter to up to almost um, 30,000 eggs per liter. So we might have, a, at any one time, if we have really small eggs, we might have about 45,000 eggs in a tray. If they're larger eggs, though, we have close to the neighborhood of uh, 20, 21,000 in, in a tray. Each tray is designed to allow water to flow from behind from the, from the tray above it. The flow through, uh, flow through system is the reuse system. What happens is the water falls back behind, and the top tray falls back behind, and then it, then it upwells through this basket. And the eggs are just kept in this basket, and it seals around the top of the mesh. So it upwells, continually it upwells through the eggs down around the channel and goes back to the next one so it can, can uh, go down through the stack. We have a total of 16 trays per stack. We only use 15 of them though because the first one has to be empty to, to keep water, um, to, get, to get it flowing properly, to keep it so it puts on a lot of air bubbles or dead spots. And things in it. So it, we typically have one egg take in one stack, in, in each stack. Um, we have the, the, the ability in here to either um, chill the water, uh, if we make it colder, the, the eggs are going to grow slower, they're going to develop slower. Uh, if we increase the water temperature, the, water, the, the fish are going to grow faster, it's going to give them out of incubation quicker. Um, there's um, pluses and minuses to both of them, and we do use both occasionally. These are brown trout fry, sack fry yet. These were taken on um, in no early November. A few, you can see a few of them that uh, didn't develop right correctly. They uh, have white sacks that are they're dying, but most of the vast majority of them are in pretty good shape. You see, they got a little bit of a, a little bit of yolk sack on yet on their on their bellies. And that's uh, they're they're still getting all their nutrition through that yolk sack. So these fish have about another. Probably about another two weeks until they're going to be ready to come out, uh, come out of the incubator and go into the, um, go into the uh, nursery tanks. When we put the fish in out of the trays, there's usually some, there's some dead fish. There's uh, there's fish that um, haven't developed properly. Um, they have some sometimes they have structural problems like um, maybe their their um, spinal cord twists around or, uh, or things like that. And um, what happens then is what, so what happens is uh, for us to get those out easily is we have this floating tray here basically that has a couple of inches on both sides that the fish that are healthy will swim up and out and away from it but the fish that aren't will be trapped by it so that we can easily remove any any dead fish that are any anything that's dead out of an incubation that we don't want in the general population um, so we weigh all the fish as they're coming in we know how much how much weight we enter enters the tank and then we'll subtract out everything that was in uh, that, that's remaining here after a few days uh, these were just put in here um, Monday was the last, which would have been yesterday, would have been the last trays that went in here. So they still have a few few fish. There's probably, a, there's probably about uh, five to 6,000 fish there that will swim out yet in the next week or so. Here's a good example of why we keep the lights off, too. You can see all the fish on the bottom. When we first came up, um, they, were, they were sitting there really docile. I mean, where there's a cover, they're not so disturbed. But down here, they're, um, they're pretty agitated and they're, they're kind of trying to, they're looking for cover. And they'll find cover, but typically they'll end up being under each other in one big pile. And what'll happen then is they'll cut the water off to the uh, uh, fresh water to the other fish, because there's too many fish in the, in the tank. So there's about uh, 250,000 fish in this, in this tank. They'll remain in here for about six weeks. Uh, they're in here to get a starter diet, and the flow is going from the head end from here is moving down very slowly. We've got about 15 gallons per minute that's going through here right now. Once they become, um, after about six weeks, they'll 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 uh, be swimming up in the water column a lot a lot more. Uh, they'll be a lot more active, uh, and then we can move them over to our other nursery tanks. The other nursery tanks draw water off the bottom, and if we put them in there in, in the um, the circular tanks right now, 
um, since they're on the bottom already, they would be sucked. In, um, it's very easy to have them get sucked against the, the bottom screen and, and, uh, and suffocate and die. So that's why we'll, we'll start the, um, the browns off in these, in these larger tanks. Rainbows, though, we can start them off right in the circular tanks. They swim up and away from it as soon as they come in. 